distinguished members of parliament, uh, participants, UPF International Leadership Conference from Europe, Eurasia, Middle East and North Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is an honor for me to sit here today, says Stan, in this historic venue to be with all of you. Before I deliver the Founders Address, I would just like to say how deeply moved I was last night at the opening banquet uh, to witness in one room so many participants of all races, religions, schools of thought, men and women, young and old, people of all ages devoted to the realization of world peace and who are tirelessly working in all sectors to create sustainable global development and harmony as one united family under God. Despite the constant news of a world drifting off into an oblivion, where division, borders, walls, armaments, war, devastation, ignorance, self-interest, poverty, lack of human and moral rights, and the outright destruction of life on this planet plague and darken our daily existence, yesterday I witnessed something completely different. I saw a ray of hope and felt for the first time in a long while that change is possible when we are united as one under the divine light and truth of God, our heavenly parent, and when we work to live together in balance and harmony with all life. I was truly inspired by the sincere heart and passionate exchange of amazing individuals, leaders, teachers, heroes, and saints who I believe are pioneering an enlightened way of life based on a higher consciousness to live for the sake of others. Such people do not just talk about peace. Rather, they work to actualize peace in their homes, in their communities, societies, nation, and the world. To all the distinguished parliamentarians and organizers, volunteers, and participants in the ILC here in London, gathered now in this historic palace of Westminster, meeting place of the House of Parliament of the United Kingdom, I deeply want to thank you and convey my deepest respect and love on this glorious day. Can we give a round of applause to all the great men and women in this room? to deliver the Founder's Address of Dr. Hak Jahan Moon, uh, our true mother and my mother, and the co-founder of UPF, uh, who truly wanted to be here with you today. But I know she and my father, the late Reverend Sung Min Moon, are here with us in joyful spirit. So I will do my best to convey the warmth of love and the hopes for peace that she has in her heart. And I invite you all to pay close attention to her message. Your Excellencies, distinguished parliamentarians from throughout Europe, Eurasia, Middle East, and North Africa, honored participants in the International Leader Com Leadership Conference of the Universal Peace Federation, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to address you here today in the historic Palace of Westminster, meeting place of the two Houses of Parliament for the United Kingdom, the House of Commons and the House of Lords. I believe it is very significant that we have gathered here for this very special session of UPF's International Leadership Conference and the launch in this region of the International Association of the Parliamentarians for Peace. I am encouraged that parliamentarians have come together, not only from the United Kingdom, but also from many other European nations, as well as nations of the Middle East and Eurasia. My late husband, Dr. Reverend Sung Min Moon and I, have always taught that individuals in every sector of society, including government, civil society, religion, business, academia, and so forth, have a responsibility to work to build a world of universal and lasting peace. This is especially true for parliamentarians. The parliament in any nation is a house of the people, a place where the voice of the people may be heard, and public good advanced by democratically elected representatives, parliamentarians. Representative democracy is a noble tradition with roots that date back many centuries and now most widely practiced form of governance. Although you have gathered here from nations around the world, you share a common appreciation and respect for serving as representatives of all the people who elected you. You are servants of the people and as such are expected to serve the public good, 
guided by principles of good governance, accountability, transparency, inclusivity, and respect for human rights and the rule of law. Good governance is not only secured by politics and laws or political systems. It is also necessary that those who hold positions of power be people of good character, guided by their conscience and universal moral principles. Good governance also depends on a well-educated and morally responsible citizen. It is also for that reason, throughout history, religion has been an important factor in contributing to the moral and spiritual development of both political leaders and the citizens. It is imperative that, within modern democratic systems, that we do not lose sight of God, <laughs> our Creator, and our Heavenly Parent. <laughs> Nor of spiritual principles and laws that have been taught throughout the ages. My husband and I have dedicated our lives exclusively <coughs> to building a world of lasting peace. This has been our lifelong mission. We have always taught that peace is not merely an absence of violent conflict. Peace comes into being whenever relationships are characterized by harmony, balance, and mutual respect. Such relationships are created when we practice unselfishness and living for the sake of others. This is the essence of true love. True love is the essence of God, who created all things as our heavenly parent. We all have a nature that derives from our common origin. That is why we are capable of practicing true love towards one another and towards all things in the world around us. Our purpose and responsibility as sons and daughters of God, our heavenly parent, is to become individuals of true love with mind, body, united. On this foundation, we can build marriages and families of true love. As a foundation for society and the nation, and in turn, we should care for the planet and all forms of life that make up our environment. If we fulfill this responsibility, we can establish a world of peace. My husband and I have applied this ideal and the principle of living for the sake of others in every sector of society. We have always honored individuals who apply these principles in the spheres of professional life, appointing them as ambassadors for peace. Many parliamentarians around the world have been appointed as ambassadors for peace, and they work closely with UPF and other affiliated organizations in our movement. In addition, I recently inaugurated the Sunhawk Peace Prize to honor individuals and organizations who have dedicated themselves to serving the well-being of others and future generations. The first Sunhawk Peace Prize was presented in August 2015. The second prize will be awarded in February 2017. When I spoke at the United Nations in Vienna, May last year, 2015, I called for a spiritual awakening. The member states of the United Nations should not merely follow their national interests. Each member state should seek to serve the whole purpose, the larger purpose, looking beyond national self-interest. When we observe the world from God's point of view, we see the world from a larger perspective. No matter what our field of endeavor, priest, parliamentarian, or professor, we should be committed and guided by the universal and moral and spiritual principles. Whether we are mayor of a small town, a pastor of a small church, or the president of a nation, or secretary general of the UN, this is our eternal responsibility. This is the responsibility of each parliamentarian gathered here. In the year 2000, my husband and I spoke at the United Nations in New York, calling on the United Nations and member states to consider an innovative proposal namely that the United Nations build within it a system of interfaith council consisting of religious, spiritual, and moral leaders who could advise, collaborate, and deliberate with the representatives of member states. Such a council would serve as a voice of universal values and principles. The UN emerged in the World War II era, more than 70 years ago, whereas the UN headquarters office in New York, Geneva, Vienna, Nairobi, there is no such office in Asia, even though we are living increasingly in an Asia-Pacific age. In many ways, the geopolitical, economic, and social center of gravity of our world is shifting towards Asia. With this in mind, UPF and other affiliated organizations of our movement are advocating the consideration of a fifth United Nations office to be established in Korea. I hope you will reflect on this proposal I believe that the 5th UN office on the Korean Peninsula, perhaps in the DMZ, with support of both Koreas, would go a long way towards establishing peace on the peninsula, towards peace in the Asia-Pacific region. 
In closing, I want to emphasize the importance of the role of parliamentarians. You represent the people. You are interested with the people's I mean, great responsibility. If parliamentarians around the world join together in harmony, cooperation, for the sake of peace, we can transform our current reality of our world here, here. and create a world of joy, harmony, and lasting peace. With this in mind, I encourage you on this day to form the International Association for Parliamentarians for Peace, centered on the principle of living for the sake of others and centered on God, our Heavenly Parent. You are the representatives of the seven billion people of the world. If you would join together in this way, there is nothing we cannot accomplish. Let us work together to build a world of lasting peace. Thank you for allowing me to share these words with you today. May God bless each and every one of you, your family, and your nation. Thank you. Very much.